Monday's here and I hope you, yes you, have a lot of really great things to look forward to this week because I just care. And also because new CPUs from Intel isn't gonna be one of them. A recent report has indicated that there is still a pretty big gap between the supply and the demand for Intel CPUs, especially on the lower end, since Intel has recently been focusing on more powerful parts that can command larger profits. Meanwhile, rival AMD has enjoyed a boost in sales thanks to Intel's struggles with cheap laptops helping Team Red make up some ground. The bigger news though is that the report also indicates that these shortages may prompt Intel to go directly to the seven nanometer process down the road as the company is dealing with both current gen shortages and their long running issues of getting 10 nanometer parts off the assembly line. Intel's current chips should be available later on in the summer though, which is the perfect season to shut yourself indoors and play video games. Now it's no secret that Google has been trying to get their fingers into every part of the tech industry. And a new patent reveals that the rumors of Google working on a game console appear to be true. The patent is for a rather standard looking controller that bears some resemblance to Sony's DualShock with two sticks in a straight line along the bottom of the device. It didn't take long for mock-ups for what the finished product might look like to make their way around on social media, but there aren't any official photos or renderings from Google at this time. So it might not look as stupid as this. The controller is rumored to be a part of Project Yeti, which everybody's talking about, but no one's seen, haha, <laughs> get it? A streaming game service that Google has reportedly been building for a while. Get it, reports, but no photos. GDC is coming up later in March and we'll hopefully get some more details then. And I'm personally really looking forward to playing Search Engine Simulator 2019 only on Gbox and also any computer. It looks like Nvidia is making good use of the high prices they've been charging for graphics cards as Team Green just spent a cool $6.9 billion on Mellanox Technologies, a firm that focuses on large scale cloud computing. Although Mellanox isn't exactly a household name for gamers, Nvidia is hoping that this acquisition will bolster its presence in the enterprise market. After all, about one third of Nvidia's sales are actually in the data center and server space and over 250 of the world's fastest supercomputers are powered by Nvidia and or Mellanox parts, mostly the interconnects for the latter there. Nvidia's focus on parallel computing has led them to become a major player in the data center market, though I wonder if they persuaded Mellanox's executives with another RTX on demonstration. Once you see those rays, like, you can't go back. Yeah, you're hooked. You're like, you know what? Forget the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy. You got rays. Just one ray. Oh, that was horrible. Now for the quick bit, sponsored by Brilliant. Oh, wait, what? Now for the quack bats, sponsored by Brilliant. Every day, Brilliant publishes several daily problems that provide a quick and fascinating look into the world of math, logic, science, engineering, or computer science, not to be confused with regular science, although they are both science. Whether you're stuck sitting in your carpool or you just wanna learn something new every day, Brilliant's daily problems are a fun, bite-sized way to master larger concepts by applying them. Each problem comes with illustrations, animations, or interactive visualizations. What is the difference between an interactive interactive visualization and an animation. I don't know, but it rhymes. And all the context that you need to solve the problem yourself. So go to brilliant.org slash techlinked and finish your day a little bit smarter, actually a lot smarter because you also watched TechLinked. The first 200 of you will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Well, make them smarter? Onto the butts. Do you remember Adobe Shockwave? Shockwave, that browser plugin that powered so many of your favorite games back in your middle school computer lab. Well, Shockwave for Windows is going to become dead in less than a month's time with the software giant discontinuing it on April 9th. Fortunately, HTML5 has somewhat filled in the gap and enabled us to waste time on our browsers with, you know, games much more efficiently than we used to. Is addictinggames.com still around? They used to have this great game called Pearl Harbor. Oh yeah. 
And there is still a, like a stupid flash game called Pearl Harbor, I think. But uh, this one was way better. You were like this plane, and you went back and forth and back and forth, yeah. and you dropped your bombs and stuff. Yeah. Hey, Linus, come on. It Stay was focused. great. All right, so you know how NVIDIA driver updates always come with 3D vision for some reason? Well, you're no longer gonna have to uncheck that little box. NVIDIA has gotten the message that no one actually cares about desktop-based 3D because, well, VR exists. So the 3D Vision drivers are gonna be discontinued after next month. Now, I'm guessing that those expensive 3D glasses that you had to buy, um, you're probably wondering what to do with them. Well, imagine this for a second. Deal with it, sunglasses. For, for Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah. Very cool. Now, if you use tap to pay you've probably seen how it only works up to a certain amount, so some miscreant can't just read your card without you knowing and then go and spend all your money. But one bank in the UK is trying to change all that, as NatWest is building fingerprint readers into its debit cards in an attempt to ensure that only the authorized user is actually able to make a payment. Now, it's only a pilot project for now as they work out the kinks, which is good because when you add a shoddy fingerprint reader onto a tap card, the time it takes to actually pay for things might make you wish you had just stuck with cash. Now, it's not exactly headline news when China banned something, but the Communist Party's most recent prohibition might catch the eyes of streamers. The government is considering a proposal to ban anyone under 18 years old from hosting a live streamed video. And apparently, it's been teenage mothers of all things that have caught the ire of the party, as some within the party have considered videos featuring them a promotion of teen pregnancy. Have babies, please. What? <laughs> And the controversy surrounding copyrights over Fortnite dances has been put on hold. I can't do it, but don't worry about it. No one cares, at least for now, after a Supreme Court ruling held that if you want to sue for copyright infringement, you have to register your work with the US Copyright Office first, and it remains an open question as to whether the Copyright Office will even agree to the requests of the actors and entertainers involved to register their dance moves, as they may not be complex enough to be recognized. I think we can all agree that Alphonse's dance, uh, Carlton, the Carlton dance, I don't know what it looks like, but I, I, I don't remember. That show was a long time ago. Even I was... You know what? Good enough. And that's our show. So dance your way back to this channel on Wednesday for more tech news, or better yet, just subscribe so you don't have to remember that stuff. Who wants to remember that stuff? I can't even remember like dances and stuff. So it's like. No, I knew that was the floss. It just wasn't a very good one. Backpack kid. Yeah, backpack kid. Are you the real backpack kid? I've never been seen wearing a backpack, so it couldn't be.